Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm still working on my my Valium. Um, I have been asking people to help me, but I'm having a problem with that. So I'm self-learning. It's not like me being in the studio when I was at WHBI. So a lot of things I have to do myself, so bear with me. So I made a video yesterday, and then once I get ready to put it on, Come to find out there was no sound. So I'm hoping there's sound today and uh, I'll be able to get this out to you today. Um, I want to give a shout out to my husband, Charles Stinson, the man that I love, um, the man that's always there for me. I really appreciate everything that he do for me. I want to give a shout out to Mike. I hope you're feeling better. I'm going to give you a call later on today. I'm sorry I didn't call you yesterday. Shout out to my children, Robin and Robert, Bill and Damiel. So, um, you know, I'm one of those um, fab over 40. So if you go on my Facebook, Donna Stinson, Lady Stinson, you'll see the link. My face is on it. You can push it, scroll up to the free links and push the free link. I need all you guys vote. So please go there to my Facebook and vote for me. I really do appreciate that because I need all of these votes. I've been doing this fab over 40 for like about two my third year and I really want to win this I get a four page spread in beauty magazine plus I get forty thousand dollars and that would be great I can uh, upgrade my business and my studio and I'll be able to bring other people on and pay them also so please look out for that go on uh, fab, my fab over 40 link uh, you'll see my face and and um, hit the link and then go it, it'll take you to the website and you'll see free links. I mean, you'll see free uh, votes. And then there's some votes where you can vote for the Cancer Society because the Breast Cancer, the Cancer Society slash Breast Cancer Society is funding this. So on with the show. So yesterday when I was doing this, hopefully you guys hear me. I was talking about um, Halloween, how it's such a bad day, how we shouldn't practice it, and I don't understand why uh, Christians practices, practice this uh, belief. It's actually a religion because they sacrifice people and they have this trick or trunk, you know, at the churches. You know, the world's going to do what they're going to do, so you can't, you know, that's their thing. But when it comes to churches, I don't believe anything so sacrilege should be done on church property because some of this stuff ain't sacred ground, so I'm just going to say church property, and there's a lot of Christian folks that um, not only are they dressing their children, they're dressing up, you know, you know, like, you know, I've had a hard day today, I'm, tonight I'm going to let loose and I'm going to put on this outfit, not knowing that this outfit is causing you to have another personality, you know, if you will, and then we wonder you know, what, what's the matter with me? Why am I acting like this? And this is like after you've taken off this costume and you put on the characteristics of this costume and we don't pay attention to our, to our character. We don't pay attention to our feelings. We just say, I don't know why I'm acting like this. There's a lot of things that we put on. Uh, there's a lot of uh, brands that we put on that cause us to be a certain way. And uh, a lot of us don't understand that people put rituals over their, their products and stuff to get you to buy it. And 
as crazy as that may sound, that's what they do. And especially with these outfits that you get, you know, on uh, Halloween, like a lot of us, you know, we want to dress up like uh, a lady devil or uh, we want to dress up like uh, Cleopatra or some type of hooker or whatnot. And those characteristics stay with us sometimes. And, and I'm not going to lie, back in the day when I was uh, celebrating Halloween and I had a certain outfit on, sometimes I didn't want to take it off because I'm like, oh, this is so cute. I really don't want to take it off. It's not that. It's the spirit that's in that outfit that's making you feel like you continuously need to wear it. And when you take it off, you're still thinking about that outfit that you had on. Some women and some men, they role play in these outfits and they turn them into a totally different person. And we need to stop wearing these outfits. Now, as for your children, you buy these uh, outfits for your children. Well, it's just one day and the children want to go out and have fun. There's more than one way going door to door, asking for treats and, and trick or treats and all this stuff. And there's a lot of bad people in the world that inject this candy and make you and your children sick. But your child could have a deficit and you're buying this outfit for them. And they're wearing it, but you don't know that they've been bullied in school. They uh, feel some type of way. Their self-esteem is low. And then you buy this outfit or this superhero outfit. They put it on. They feel invincible, like they can't, you know, do no wrong. They can do anything. And then just like us as adults, after the trick-or-treating is over and they have to take um, the costume off, I'm quite sure a couple of you uh, parents that heard your child say, Oh, my, please, can I leave it on a little bit longer? Can I sleep in it? That's whatever it is that's controlling your child or whatever it is that's in that outfit, that's what's making your child say and do these things. And even some of you parents, some of you guys out there, you have deficits, and you don't have a voice. And you will get around people that you know is going to downgrade you. I don't know why we do this to ourselves. And I used to do it, and I had to get out of that because I'm like, this is like a form of self-torture. Why are you around folks that you know are going to downgrade you, and you sit up and do that, and then when you leave, you think about all the things you should have said while you was there, and you didn't say it. Meanwhile, when you get home, the things that people said, now you're deflecting all of this onto your child and calling your child out their name and talking crazy to your child because you didn't know or you didn't have the voice to say it to somebody else. So you got to bully your child. We don't know what these, what this particular day does to us. As a matter of fact, we don't know what the last few months of the year does to us. October, November, December, January come, and we're just as cold, like, back to life as usual, not knowing that the government has us saying, okay, this is what we're supposed to celebrate. Everybody dress up and put on another personality and be evil or slutty or some type of superhero or whatever you want to be during this time of the year. And then the next, the, it's the very next month, you're supposed to be thankful. I'm thankful for having a loving family. When, when you were in this costume, it was all about you. You didn't care about this. You didn't care about that. You didn't care about the homeless. You didn't care about nothing. But now, you, here come Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for my home. I'm thankful I have a place to grow by, boy, by stopping. Y'all, you guys don't know how these months and, and the holidays in this month swing your emotions so quick to where depression sets in. And this is like, these three months are the most, and, and going into January because of the new year. These are the most crucial months where people uh, are sacrificed uh, due to whatever uh, sacrilege that's going on. Uh, this is the most vulnerable time where people are suicidal. Uh, a lot of people are not around their family, so they really can't, you know, connect with anybody. There's a lot of people that we say, oh, they're just mean. Even older folks, they're just mean, and that's why they always by themselves. I'm not going by there. These people are hurting, and we think that it's mean. They're putting a wall up because they don't want to be hurt. Sometimes you have to go beyond your comfort zone to help another person. 
And that's what I, what I always try to do. And that's what we all need to try to do. Because in this, especially in this day and age, everybody is so cold hearted when we come down to these few little months that's coming up. And then we go into January. Joy to the world. Joy to what world? What world are we giving joy to? It's, it's not heaven. It's definitely not heaven. And even in these months where it's supposed to be peace and goodwill on earth, there's people robbing, stealing, raping, uh, looting, pillaging. Even right now, there's war going on. People are literally being blown up. Children and women are literally being blown up. And we're worried about what's going on in our lives. How am I going to do my hair tomorrow? Where am I going Friday when I get my check? Oh, yeah, I'm going to buy this outfit and this, that, and the other. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Yeah, there, there is somebody that you're supposed to follow that's supposed to uh, be leading and guiding you. We're not our own. We're not our own. We wasn't put here on earth so we could run them up on ourselves as well as others. And speaking of running a buck, I was on, I think it was Newsbeat or Newsbreak or something, and they were talking about how everybody needs to calm down and give Kamala a break or Kamami or whatever her name is and how she's going to be the next president. And people don't understand that history is being made. I do understand. I understand and if I wasn't a Christian, I, I think I would still feel this way. I'm not voting for a person who, who laid on their back to get to the top one. I'm not voting for a person who's telling me that we're going to vote for, we're, I'm for the people. I'm for the middle class. Okay, what is middle class? What is the cap on middle class as far as monetary or financial means? $100,000, $200,000, $300,000? We know a lot of us don't make that. So if we don't make that, we're in the category of poor. She's still not helping nobody. She's not helping us. She's not helping the people that need it the most. So when she talks, and then that goes for uh, Trump too. I, I I went. I don't vote. I didn't vote for neither one of them. I I, I got my votes early, and I wrote in Jesus Christ. Because they've already said if you once you stop voting, they're gonna start finding you for not voting. And you see now on the radio it says and on TV they say, okay, well, it doesn't say who you vote for, but it is public knowledge if you voted in the last five to ten years. In a minute they're gonna start saying who you voted for who right after the election. But this lady is set up and saying how much she loved Tupac and how when she was in college she listened to Tupac. No, she didn't because Tupac wasn't even out then. You hanging out with all of these uh, men in your younger years and then she don't even care for foundation of black Americans. You can love who you want to love. She got such a disdain for black men, she didn't even want to marry them. You know why? Because she's not black. And women like her with the light skin and all that, they don't want to be considered black. And if you know some, I'm not speaking on all, not all, not all, but most, most light-skinned women don't even want to be around dark-skinned men. And when they are, they want to put their stuff on a pedal like they're better than dark-skinned women. Like back in the 60s, they had the paper bag test. If you're darker than that paper bag, then you couldn't be in certain uh, sororities. You couldn't be in certain uh, uh, women's groups if you were dark. But if you were light or mulatto, oh, you were welcome. But a lot of you mulatto women and light-skinned women just don't know you were just a token. You were talk token then and you are token now. Kamami is a token. She wasn't put in the White House to run for the presidency. She was put in the White House so Biden could get black people to vote. Kamami wasn't even nominated for votes. The only reason she got into office is because Biden, which I said in 2016, 
was not going to be able to live out or, or not live out, was not going to be able to finish his term because when he first came on the scene, he looked like he had dementia, Alzheimer's. I work with these type of people. And if you go back and look at my 2000, around the election of 2016 and after they won, you'll see that I said that Biden was not going to finish out his term. So she got this nomination on a default. She's bringing all the most raunchiest people up there. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion, Lizzo. Uh, Beyonce, she's raunchy too. She's just a raunchy woman with some money. And everybody flocks to it. None of you guys know her. None of you guys has ever met her. And Kamami, and this is how I feel, is the phoniest person that I've never met in my whole life. The phoniest person that I've never met. Let me say that again. Kamami Harris is the phoniest person I never met in my whole life. We sitting up talking about, oh, there's going to be a black woman in office and we're making history. Uh, this is the most important uh, nomination, the most important uh, uh, candidacy ever. This is the most important election ever. Every year we say that. This is the most important election, even when Obama and Michael was in office. This is the most important uh, election that there ever been. And then not only that, you know, they she had uh, Michael and 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 Barack come up there, and and and, and, and especially Barack try to downgrade the men because. They're, you know, turning away from Democrat. Black people, foundation of Black Americans, period, are turning away from Democrat because they treat us like little hoes and they're our pimps and they just want us to do what they want to say. But people, what we don't understand is whether we vote today, we don't vote today, it's all in God's hands. So all the, all the Republicans and the Democrats are doing is making us fight amongst each other. Our votes don't really count. The electoral votes are the only votes that count. So I'm letting you guys know when it comes to these holidays, when it comes to uh, these votes, when it comes to these people, the Republicans and the Democrats are two sides of the same coin. They'll sit up and tell you how sleazy the other pe person is, and then they'll have a secret dinner where everybody is together, and they're playing st um, strategy games, that, like that game Stratego back in the day. They're playing these games with people's lives because this is a cult. This is all spiritual. This is all spiritual. And we think that we have a say in something. We may have a say in what's going on locally. And even that's crazy because all of these politicians are in the race for the White House. It's like rock teacher. Everybody is trying to get to the top, like Fraggle Rock. Everybody is trying to get to the top. And meanwhile, the little man is left holding the bag of what? Nothing. But. Matter of fact, go to YouTube and check out uh, a reporter called Professor Black Truth, and he speaks the truth on a lot of things that's going on in our community. And uh, Tarisha Nasheed, he is hilarious, but he speaks a lot of truth to power too. So these are two people that I listen to, the Minister of Wellness, uh, especially Gino Jennings. I listen to him a lot. And uh, a lot of us are so dang on sensitive and we need to get thick skin. This man has a wealth of knowledge to teach us and we sit up like somebody's yelling at us and we don't have to listen to it. You know what? Sometimes, and, I, and I'm this person, I need an in-your-face type of person to, to help me out. I need a mentor that's in, in your face. I need someone that I feel like I'm following telling me what's the real. I don't need nobody sugarcoating nothing for me. But a lot of you people are so in your heads and you so, uh, it's all about me. Like Joyce Meyer was like, what about me? What about me? What about me? What about you? And we're going to vote for Kamami because she said that we're in control of our own bodies and we 
uh, should be able, you know, they shouldn't abolish the uh, Roe versus Wade law. You shouldn't be having sex, and you shouldn't if you're not married, and you shouldn't be aborting babies. A lot of you, a lot of you chicks use the dang on Planned Parenthood like it's a garbage can. You're a murderer. Murderer. You murderers. And I'm not talking about all of y'all. There's some people, things happen, and some people, it's either the child or the mother. Back in the in the biblical days, if the child if the child lived and, and it was at the expense of the mother, there was a reason why that child lived in that mother's hand. But I do understand, you know, if it's going to hurt the mother and the mother feel like, you know, that that she can get rid of the child because it's either her or the child. I understand it. Uh, I understand, you know, somebody was molested. I understand it. But I, I don't condone it. I really don't. This is my body. No, that's the Lord's body. He made that body. You didn't make anything that's on you. As a matter of fact, how can you change something about you that you did not make? I was like this from birth, and you know what I'm talking about. You wasn't like that from birth. Some people, and I've said this before, some people were raped as a little kid. Some people, some uh, some people were uh, molested as a little child, and they fell into this way of life because somebody uh, molested them and actually forced their mind into that way of life. Some people experimented and liked it. And decided to continue to do that. But I'm letting you people know that uh, if we don't come to the knowledge that it's all about the Lord, it's not about us, just like uh, atheists. Well, I'm a good person, and I don't hurt nobody, and I do the best I can for my community. Okay, well, that's not it. There was a leader, a cult leader called... Anton McVeigh. And when he got ready to die and he was on his sick bed, you know what he said? Oh my God, I made a mistake. There is a God. The devil is real and so is God. If we don't come to the knowledge that a lot of the things that we celebrate, like Christmas, Jesus wasn't even born uh, in the wintertime. And if we read our Bible and see uh, the year that he was born, we'll see that it was in the springtime. A lot of us go on and, 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 and put our miles on the Bible and say, well, this is what the Bible says. And then some of the stuff you guys say, you need to sort the whole word to fit your narrative. Now, I know everybody's not into the Bible and, you know, it, hey, whatever floats your boat. For me, that's what it is. Even before I got serious in the Bible, this, this Halloween thing, it kills people. It sacrifices people. It makes people think there's something other than what they are. Then you allow spirits to come into you. That's what entertainment means. Being detained for interest. For something to come into you. As a matter of fact, there's a man by the name of G. Craig Lewis. He has a DVD called Detained for Interest. And he talks about how the, all this entertainment is deterring you for other things to come into you. And it's a really good DVD. You should check it out. But I'm just letting you guys know people like Trump, people like uh, 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 Harris, these people are going to save you. You act like these folks are going to save you. You know what they're going to do? They're going to move into a big White House where they get a big chunk of our taxpayers' money. And when they leave, and because uh, they don't have to retire, when they leave, they call it retirement. But when they leave, they take a chunk of every president, take a chunk of our money with them, even if they're not president anymore. Just because they have the title, they get that money. And where are you? Sitting around still wondering, how am I going to pay my bills? How stupid is that? Meanwhile, we're sitting up calling each other stupid because... This person is voting for Harris, and this person is voting for Trump, and neither one of these people give a damn about you. 
you guys need to second guess or second think or rethink or whatever it is you have to do. Rethink what you're doing with your lives. Rethink the decisions that you make. Because contrary to popular belief, decisions, your decisions will come back to haunt you sometimes. The choices that you make can determine whether you're going to stay on this earth or whether you're going to leave this earth. So I wanted to come on. I'm trying to get on a little bit more. But I want to let you guys know that I love you. Please go to my Facebook, Donna Stinson, Lady Stinson, and uh, vote for me. I need all, all you guys vote because if I do win this $40,000, I am going to be hiring people. So I am going to get back to my community. I'm going to donate to my church. I'm going to do things that I need to do. I'm actually going to, I said I was going to donate to the homeless. I don't want to give to these, these false uh, places that say uh, for 10 cents you can, you can take care of this person. You can take care of that person. Why is why is the United States sending all our money over here to people who don't have anything when we have people here in the United States like veterans and runaways and homeless children that don't have anything? I'd rather go out in the street and give $5,000 to homeless people that, that the Lord tells my spirit to give to when they give it to some corporation that's going to make a buck. I give them 100 and they're going to take it. They're, they're going to take 60% and give 40 back to into the community. That's not about to work. Either. So I love you guys. Till the next time we talk, stay strong and be strong.